This is Anarchast. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Anarchast. I'm Jeff Berwick. This is your home for anarchy on the Internet. Uh, we have our first female guest of all time on Anarchast. And I'm sorry there's no actual prize or anything, but I just wanted to say this is our first female guest. We have Christine Smith, and she's coming in from Salida, Colorado, somewhere on the side of the mountains, somewhere, she tells me. I'd, I've never heard of Salida. Uh, how are you, Christine? I'm doing very well. So I is a beautiful little town. Uh, they call themselves a city, but they're pretty small. But it's the uh, uh, closest uh, uh, city that anyone might recognize, if they recognize that. My home is actually on the side of a mountain, uh, and I'm in the uh, uh, mountains of southern Colorado, the Rocky Mountains, up in the Sangre de Cristo Mountains. And uh, it's a pleasure to be with you today, Jeff. Well, thank you, and uh, thanks for being on with us. And uh, you know what I'm going to ask you, very first question of every time we have a new guest on, is how did you become an anarchist? Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm going to answer that in this way. Um, I believe in terms of the rejection of government and rules and laws to, to govern our life. In a way, I think that all of us, and I know this was true for myself, we start out that way as children. I know that as a child um, throughout my life, my freedom and my individuality has been uh, paramount to my life. And I, and I speak of myself as a child because um, at that time, before I even began any political activity, I never relate it uh, to the way that other children and even adults um, behaved as if they needed to group together. You know, I now look at it as the herd mentality. But even as a child, you saw that. They wanted to do things in unison. They wanted to do their pep rallies. They were always rallying around and having a hierarchy of importance. And uh, I never related to that. I was always an individual. I loved my solitude. And if the activity wasn't something I was involved in. I really wasn't someone that wanted to watch. I just wanted to, to do things myself as an individual. The issues that were really important to me as I grew, um, I'd say into my early teens, did bring me uh, at that time, as with so many people, into the political arena. And um, I did it for the, the things that I was passionate about at the time, the issues that mattered to me. And I really began early in my teen years um, very conservative, uh, especially on economic issues, which, of course, you know, I still am. Um, but I uh, actually was a member when I was able to register to vote, you know, as a Republican. But all through my teens, I actually was involved um, in uh, supporting Ronald Reagan, even before I could uh, uh, vote, and it was very involved politically. Um, and I believe that the Republican Party reflected a lot of my key values. However, as an individual, I was also extremely interested in environmental concerns, humanitarian issues. Um, uh, issues in terms of respect uh, for, for other species and the way that we treat them, and for those who had less than I do, and I was always uh, deeply concerned. And I sort of made a transition later in my life and ended up registering as a Democrat, believing uh, wrongly that the government had a role in helping people. Um, and although I was deeply involved in helping people, I had not made the connection at that time in my life that you do not force others to do something. Then it's certainly not charitable. And even though in my own life I always focused on the things that I was doing as an individual, I, I guess, you know, I accepted that big lie that uh, political parties had some sort of a meaning and that you could affect positive change. Um, however, I became quite disillusioned in my 30s with both uh, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. I saw that the Republicans certainly weren't about fiscal conservatism, uh, and I certainly also saw that the Democratic Party just exploited the poor, in my opinion. And and um, that's when I started evolving into libertarianism, which really fit me more than anything else. And again, um, I, uh, I, I searched to see if there was a group of persons. And when I discovered um, libertarian minarchists um, and the libertarian party, I became very deeply involved in the LP. It seemed like the perfect match. Here was a political party that espoused the principles that I believed in. Uh, but as many of your viewers may be aware of, um, I soon became uh, – after a few years of deep involvement in the LP, I became disillusioned with the LP as well. And I think it's the same as with the other parties. What we're talking about are people grouping together for a supposed cause and purpose, but the principles mean less to them 
uh, that, that they espouse uh, than actually putting them into action. Um, I remember a friend of mine uh, one time said in my life years ago, well, you know, Christine, everybody has their price. And I remember telling them, well, I don't. And they paused and said, yeah, I believe you don't. And I think that there are very few of us who choose to adhere to those principles. And um, I became disillusioned with the party, although I remained a libertarian minarchist. And uh, even that did not set well with me because I'm somebody who is always examining myself, Jeff. And I found that my belief in non-aggression, my belief in freedom, I was actually contradicting. And if there's one thing I don't want to do in my life is contradict the things that I say that I believe in, that I feel in my heart. And I realized that for the sake of holding on to some uh, need for government, say for justice, in a court system, I was actually saying that that, um, that the end justifies the means, that the end that I, I imagine the only way that we could have justice and, uh, in this society and not have a lot of violence was that we needed to have government. I realized I was contradicting myself, and I can't live with that kind of contradiction. I realized I've been wrong the majority of my life to be involved in political activities, which in their basis, electoral politics was coercion, and I evolved into being an anarchist, and uh, that's where I left my minarchist friends behind because I do believe they still have a fear of freedom. And I, uh, interestingly enough, as status as we can see the Democrats and Republicans, liberals and conservatives, I must say that even uh, libertarian minarchists are still little status because they believe there's a need for a centrally planned government. And many of them, the more purest of them, were like me. Uh, they thought it was for justice. Then I started uh, thinking, get out. And I read a lot of Robert Higgs. I read a lot of Bastiat. And uh, I realized that the uh, greatest perpetrator of violence in society is government. And I saw the tyranny of the U.S. government for what it is. And I realized that it's a contradiction to seek any uh, government whatsoever. And I believe that I returned as an anarchist to the way that I was as a child. I realized, uh, Christine, you don't need other people to accomplish the good in life. You are perfectly happy on your own, and you make much more of a difference as an individual than joining with people who generally seem to want to compromise their principles. So uh, I'm very happy. I feel just like I did as a child, and uh, I believe we can f accomplish far more as individuals than uh, joining with others. And we certainly don't need coercion and violence which is what government is. Government's evil, and uh, even a little bit of evil is something that I reject and I'm not going to validate. Well, that's great. It's really interesting how it came full circle for you in your life. And uh, it was interesting that you pointed out that uh, you were quite into environmental type things. And uh, that's one big question I get asked a lot as an anarchist. Uh, people ask me, well, without the government pointing guns at us, we'll just destroy everything and kill everything on Earth. So uh, maybe you could explain a little bit from the anarchist perspe perspective how you can still uh, love the Earth and love the environment and like a clean environment and love animals and still be an anarchist. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, yes, as with any other thing where I would want justice sought and where I would want uh, the security of what is important, um, I, uh, when you go back in history, the government is the greatest polluter of the environment that there is. And like as with any other area that they say that they're going to protect us, they actually pollute more and they don't have the accountability that we would uh, in freedom, in a free market. And I, uh, in fact, I, I think about it. I'm not going to go into detail detail right now, but there's a situation going on right where I live here in Colorado in which I see, uh, in my opinion, the government completely failing and not even representing, they always use that word that like they're representing us, not even representing the wishes of the people for the protection of the environment. Why? Because uh, money speaks. And uh, when you turn over the protection of something as important as the as, uh, environment and uh, environmental impact and the, the animals of an area to government control, well, we always know what influences government, and they have no accountability, and money is what talks when it comes to government. While as in a, in a anarchist, which would be true freedom, if we had such a society, then all, all of our property would be privately owned. Uh, that's not to say there won't be people who come together on their own voluntarily, perhaps, just as in land trusts. 
uh, to protect things for future generations and to, to make such areas. But I must say that nobody threatens the uh, environment and has done more harm to the environment and let private corporations get get away with more harm than the government. And I don't believe that uh, there wasn't that commonly owned, as they say, public land. Uh, we wouldn't have some of the terrible situations that we have of pollution that we do now. Agreed. Earlier you uh, brought up uh, some comments about minarchists and basically stating that uh, they're still, uh, well, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, still kind of evil. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, perhaps you could explain a little bit of uh, your thoughts on the difference between minarchists and anarchists. Well, certainly, and I and I appreciate speaking to to minarchists um, uh, because that's that's my most recent past, and actually the majority of my acquaintances are, of course, libertarian minarchists. I would ask a uh, fellow minarchist, and I'm speaking to the ones that were like myself that truly believe and and feel that they are advocating freedom. Uh, I'm not talking about all the hypocrites that call themselves libertarians who are still pro-war and uh, just uh, you know they have their exceptions to the rule. I'm talking about the, the real libertarian minarchists who care about freedom, and they identify all of the evils of government so well, but yet they are making the same mistake that other statists are making because they still think that they can reform it. Now, for me, I fundamentally reject the idea of government from, I would say, a spiritual basis. I believe in love, and love to me is respecting the freedom of all. Government, as we have come to know it in this society, being a coercive authority that assumes an authority, an illegitimate authority, because we have not all consented to it, uh, is, uh, is violent. Violence is backing it up. And I do completely, and I would emphasize this to your viewers, uh, distinguish between governance and government. But as long as you think that a government, meaning a coercive authority, something that everything they say is backed up with a gun, is necessary for anything, then you are in conflict with freedom. You're saying, I believe in freedom, but only up to this point. And that's not the way freedom operates. Operates. Call it liberty, but stop calling it freedom because you're actually fearing total freedom. And to me, I trust freedom. I have faith in freedom. And I do not believe that there should be any stopping point if you say that freedom is your goal. Uh, and I do believe that it's a, it is a fear of, of what that freedom would mean. It's because they don't have all of the answers. And none of us need to have all of the answers. But you need to put that faith in freedom and go that next step. You've come that far. And it's just a rational, logical next step. Instead of saying, well, I'm going to reform government, and we can cut out this. And, and I also find it quite delusional, actually. You know, so many of them talk about returning to a constitutional republic. Number one, I, I reject that, you know, from a, I would say, a spiritual basis because it's anti-freedom. But look at what all of history has shown you. Um, every uh, This government has become a tyranny. Tyrannies do not go backwards. You had the greatest experiment, uh, as they say, in government, small government, and look at the monster it has become uh, and all the evil it's able to do. It steals your money. It steals your, your income. It taxes your income. It taxes your business. It taxes your property so that it can take that money and do anything that it wants. And I also find it quite delusional for them to think that they're ever going to, like, balance the budget. I can't use the word budget when it comes to government. And I would have to say, I mean, you know, default is, I think, maybe inevitable and an economic collapse. Stop trying to delay it, because I really feel that these debates um, is time wasted from your life. In fact, uh, I really believe that every dollar spent, every hour spent on electoral politics um, for the change you think is uh, time and money away from your life you're never going to regain. You may need that money one time, especially um, as the society, the government um, may collapse, things may get much worse and may devolve into an even greater police state than it is now. And I do believe that you better be spending all of your time, all of your resources preparing for yourself, for your family, and if you wish, if you have extra and you can give that and help others, help people directly. Again, go back to being that individual. Don't look to government to provide you anything. Otherwise, you're not having that faith in freedom. That's great advice, and that's sort of stuff uh, I talk about as well in a newsletter I write called The Dollar Vigilante. We talk about how we're expecting uh, these governments, uh, which are totally artificial, unnatural constructs, to collapse 
Uh, and they are in the state of collapse right now. There's no doubt about it if you actually open your eyes and, and try to pay attention to what's going on. And uh, that's very good advice to people to uh, uh, spend as much time as they can on, on real things and not on these uh, basically theater and, and, and false premises and artificial constructs that are the nation states and, and democracy and all of these concepts, which, you know, I guess we did try them as a human race, and that's fine, right? And they tried communism a number of times, and everyone just kept getting killed and dying. And, you know, at what point do you say, okay, well, that's enough evidence, and uh, let's move on. But uh, thanks to government schooling, uh, no one knows any of this stuff, so they have to keep relearning it over and over at, through trial and error. And, of course, the error part uh, usually includes genocide and starvation and all sorts of things. So and it's, I agree. Uh, I think that it may get uh, very painful in our society, and I I do believe that it is uh, it is a meaningless activity to try to be involved in something as evil as government in order to try to make things better. Um, you need to examine the premise. If you believe in freedom, then you need to live it. You need to evince it. And I must say, Jeff, I have found in my life I'm a very happy person. I always have been, but I'm so much happier now, more personally fulfilled. I can spend my time and money far more wisely on the things that matter to Christine's life and to the people that she cares about. And, uh, and as you and I were just talking, and you so well stated, and in terms of provision, because it will be very painful uh, if the nation state collapses, uh, uh, economically so and in, in, in so much. But the more that you're thinking about that now, instead of wasting your time on electoral politics, the better prepared you're to, going to be. I don't believe in surviving. I believe in thriving. And I'm thriving right now. And I'm living as free as I can in spite of the tyranny around me. They may force me with, you know, their point of a gun. That's what government is, to have to, you know, they steal your income, you know, with the, with the income tax. They, they, they tax you every, every step of the way. And they have their laws. However, they cannot take away the freedom that, that I have as a human being. Like as I said, as I had as a child and as I have now. And, but I'm certainly not going to volunteer give them any of my time and my money, which I see candidates, political candidates and political parties doing. I guarantee you when you come to the end of your life, that $50 you send a candidate or that $500 you send a candidate or those 50 hours you, you devoted to some campaigning are going to be meaningless. And the things that matter are going to be your family. It's going to be the people that you helped. It's going to be the garden that you grew. It's going to be the life that you lived. Make your life a garden. Make it bloom. Those are the things that matter. And I, I think they're seeking for freedom through an unfree system. All right? Government is anti-freedom. And that's a contradiction. And I think that contradiction is what bothered me and what helped me to evolve. And if you feel that contradiction, let it go. And I must tell you, talk about freedom. That is a freeing experience. Well, you certainly sound and look very happy, uh, especially on your YouTube videos, which is where I first uh, encountered you. And uh, perhaps uh, we're running out of time, so perhaps you can let people know where they can find more information on, on what you're doing. I know you have YouTube videos, and maybe there's other things that you can point uh, people to to find out more information about the things you're uh, doing. Oh, certainly. Thank you, Jeff. And let me tell you, it has been a pleasure to, to speak with you and your viewers. I invite people to my website, which is christinesmith.us. And from there, you can find a link to all of my YouTube, on uh, my YouTube channel. And you can also link up with me on Facebook. And we have some lively conversations, dialogue on my Facebook. And I would just leave um, your, your viewers with this. Um, think about what is really important in life. And you as an individual, because I think so many people, even those calling themselves anarchists, um, uh, I think it's, it's sort of a tragedy. It's a personal tragedy. We're each on our own path. I'm just sharing what I have found to be true, uh, that if you are involved in any kind of activity because you need the people activity, you need it to entertain yourself, you need that, that social fix, or maybe it elevates you and your career, there's always, of course, financial benefits. None of these are reasons to compromise your, your principles. And if you believe in freedom, think about what that truly means. Don't be afraid of freedom at any level. And it's not about the numbers as an anarchist for me. I don't care about, quote, converting people, um, because it's unlike a electoral politics. It has nothing to do with numbers. But I just want to share with my brothers and sisters, it's a, such a more happier life when you realize that electoral politics is meaningless and you've got a life to live and take care of yourself and those that you love and you have so much more time and money to do it when you, you leave all that behind. I just consider all that a, 
a spiritual insanity, and I'm glad I'm through with it. <laughs> well, that's all great advice, and uh, you're a very inspirational person. I feel like being more excited about being anarchist today than I normally am. Uh, so thank you very much for being on with us. And uh, you are our first uh, female guest, and I hope uh, not the last one. I'd love to interview more uh, female anarchists. Please let me know out there. Message me or send me an email. And no, not just for a date, but uh, just for uh, to be on Anarchast, so we can go from there. So uh, thank you very much, Christine, for being with us. And I, I hope we can have you on again sometime soon to uh, help uplift the people about the... Uh, the, uh, the virtue and the uh, prosperity that freedom can bring. Thank you, Jeff. It's been a pleasure. And that's it for today. That's uh, Anarchast, uh, your home for anarchy on the Internet. Peace, love, and anarchy. <laughs>